My mobile apps generate $46,396 MRR. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the exact technology stack that I used to build my profitable mobile apps. I'll be walking through the front end, back end, APIs, database, analytics, error monitoring, as well as marketing and scaling tools that you need not only just to build a product, but to build a scalable revenue generating business. To build a mobile app, I highly recommend using Flutter. Flutter is a cross-platform framework built and maintained by Google for building iOS and Android apps. Technically, you can build web apps with Flutter as well, but I would highly advise you against it. I recommend using Flutter if you are sure that you want to build an app for iOS and Android users first. You could have a web companion, but the ideal strategy would be to set up a web companion on a separate platform. Flutter is fantastic because it integrates with Google services like Firebase and Google Analytics, as well as Google Ads. I highly recommend the Flutter Firebase stack, and I have an entire course on my YouTube channel for building apps with Flutter and Firebase. Flutter comes with a programming framework called Dart, which can be used inside of a vibe coding platform like Cursor. However, Flutter Flow is a fantastic drag and drop interface for building Flutter based apps. You do not need to be a developer or have any coding experience to be successful with Flutter Flow. In fact, I've taught over 1100 entrepreneurs how to build software products using Flutter Flow. And the reason I like it so much is because Flutterflow has done a good job giving you all the capabilities of a developer, but you don't need to actually write the code. Flutterflow has integrations with RevenueCat, Firebase, Supabase, Google Ads, SDKs for Mixpanel, and pretty much everything that you need to build a successful Flutter app without actually having to write Flutter code by hand in an IDE like Xcode, or excuse me, VS Code or Cursor. If you're new to software development and you're sure you want to build an app, I highly recommend Flutterflow because you learn all the computer science fundamentals and you have full control of the underlying source code. You can still export all the code from Flutterflow and maintain it as if you're a Flutter developer. And this is the route that I'm going mostly with whenever I build a mobile app. And that's because it's backed on the Flutter framework. However, if you are building a web app, I highly recommend React. React is an open source framework for building web-based applications built and maintained by Facebook. Facebook built React to make it easy for developers, probably for them, to build web software products. The cool thing is, is nowadays you don't have to learn how to write React code. Similarly, you can build React apps by AI generating them using a Vibe code technology like Lovable. Lovable is my favorite right now, primarily because they just raised I think a uh, $200 million raise, or excuse me, funding round, which enables them to build software for a long time, extends their runway, and gives me full confidence that if I build a product on Lovable, they have the runway, the team, and the resources to build features that will further support a full technical operation of a software built on Lovable. I'm not just talking about an MVP, but I'm talking about a software development environment that's capable of me building a multi-million dollar software venture on top of. That's why I'm very confident in Lovable and Lovable generates React-based applications. So my two favorite front-end technologies right now are Flutter and React, and I don't think it will change for a long time. I highly recommend using Lovable for building web-based SaaS applications. I've built multiple SaaS apps using Lovable. I built a YouTube uh kind of freebie redemption tool. I'm even building a charity uh, app right now for a local charity here in Atlanta that we are gonna be scaling to 8,000 users. I have a video on my YouTube channel of me building that as well as a video that I'm working on where I'll show the entire process of how I built the web-based application, compiled it into mobile and actually launched it, okay? So Lovable is great for building web SaaS. But you'll notice down here, Lovable primarily integrates with a backend called Supabase. Supabase is a backend as a service that allows you to build and manage SQL based databases. So there are two types of databases in the world of software development. There's a SQL database and then there is a NoSQL database, otherwise known as a JSON database. SQL databases like Supabase represent data in a spreadsheet like format where you have rows and columns. You also may need to know the query language called SQL. SQL stands for 
structured query language, and it is how you interact with a SQL database. This is interesting because SQL is actually a fundamental computer science concept. It's not a language, but it's a concept that you learn in computer science schools, and you can actually add this as a transferable skill on your resume if you master the structured query language um, kind of syntax. It's not really a coding language, but it's a syntax. For example, I can show you what a SQL query looks like. The most um, common SQL query is a select query where you might even see select these columns from table name and then you can do other things like join if you want to merge tables together it's very simple to understand you can get away with just writing very simple queries and you can go far in sql i wouldn't shy away from it in fact it's very powerful especially if you're building b2b SaaS applications or applications that require any sort of compliance or access control at the database level superbase is great for that however if some of the stuff that i'm saying is kind of scary to you, you may just want to gear toward Firebase. Personally, even having over 10 years of experience developing applications, I highly recommend Firebase because of how easy it is to use. And as I mentioned earlier, Flutter is built and maintained by Google, so is Firebase. Firebase is a Google product and it integrates really beautifully with Flutter. Firebase has everything that you need to build and scale a software application. When you work with Firebase, you have access to an entire suite of solutions like authentication, where you can have uh, the ability to integrate sign in with Google, sign in with email, sign in with phone number. You have storage where people can upload images, upload files. You have a database where people can actually store their records and you can interact with data on your app. You have remote config, which allows you to control uh, elements of your app without having to ship another release. For example, if you wanted to change the headline of your paywall, you can use Firebase remote config to adjust that variable and you don't have to ship another version. It's also very helpful for A-B testing in case you wanna split test what type of variation performs better. You have functions that I don't really use too much, but you can trigger these asynchronous functions whenever people interact with your database. You have Crashlytics that allow you to be notified whenever a crash happens in your app or an error happens in your app. This is specifically useful whenever people are reporting crashes you can go into here and see what line of code or what widget is um, causing that crash. You have analytics here where we can see how many people are interacting with our app and there's a lot more tools um, that we have access to. So Firebase is an all-in-one backend suite that you can pretty much scale applications on to the moon. If you look at my usage and billing, we aren't paying much for an application that's generating about 25,000 ARR. This is my smaller app closure coach that's generating 25K ARR. So my app's making 25,000 a year, um, ARR that is, and it's only costing me 35 cents to use. That's because Firebase has a very generous free tier and you pretty much never have to, to pay. And when you do, it's going to be a good problem to have. Okay. So now we've talked about the front end. We've talked about database authentication. One thing I'm leaving out right now is, um, the back end in terms of APIs. So I have two options right now for two different types of people. One really awesome API builder that I'm gearing toward a lot these days is NAN. NAN is a workflow automation platform that allows you to drag and drop and create these complex business uh, workflows. These workflows can be integrations with AI like ChatGPT, like Gemini, like VO3, like pretty much any API that you wanna integrate or third-party data source you can create an N8N workflow for it, expose it as a webhook, and then integrate it into your front-end application, or you can pretty much have it stand alone as your back-end API server. This is really cool if you don't want to generate or write code, but if you do want to generate or write code, one of my favorite tools right now for generating Node.js code is Firebase Studio. Firebase Studio is a vibe code platform that I don't really like using for front-ends. I like using it right now for backends and APIs. You could literally build your own REST APIs or Node.js servers within Firebase Studio without having much experience, and they host it for you for very, very cheap. So Firebase Studio is what I recommend for people who want to vibe code their own backends. N8N is what I recommend for people who want you know complex API integrations and uh, they want to leverage the power of a drag and drop visual builder. Um, these tools are fantastic. Okay, well, now that we know how to build, We've kind of covered the front end, the back end, the database and APIs. 
The next step is to cover payments. How do we actually make money from our software? Well, one tool I really like right now, and I'm actually switching to this tool from RevenueCat, is Adapti. Adapti has much better control over the paywall of your app. So you can control, you know, do you want 50% of users to see paywall A, 50% of users to see paywall B. We can run pricing tests and they have much stronger analytics so that you can recognize how much people are paying for your product over time. They have better reporting on LTV and you can split test paywalls without having to use two separate platforms. With RevenueCat, you have to bolt on Superwall and then you have to bolt on RevenueCat together. Sometimes the integrations break, but with Adapti, it's all in one. And I have a special link in my description in case you want to sign up for Adapti uh, and use our special discount. Well, this is how you would get people to pay for your product on a mobile app. Mobile app subscriptions typically go through the in-app purchase ecosystem on Google Play or on App Store Connect. Adapti is your bridge into App Store Connect and Google Play. However, if you're building a web-based SaaS or you're doing offline transactions, you can run payments through Stripe. You can run payments through Stripe on a mobile app if the service that you're rendering is offline. For example, our charity event, since it's actually like a physical run that we're doing in person, we have the permission from Apple to run those ticket transactions offline. If it was a digital good, like if it was access to a certain app feature, we would need to transact that through Adapti, RevenueCat, or the in-app purchase ecosystem because Apple and Google want digital consumable purchases to be done on their platform. Cool. Now we've talked about payments. We need to know what people are doing on our app. I did mention to you that Firebase has their own analytics dashboard. This is really good for high level analytics. But remember, if you watched my full course on how to build a profitable mobile app from start to finish, it's my one hour course that is in my channel where I go over not just how to build, but how to turn it into a you know, revenue generating business. And I go over the funnel concept. We need to have a mixed panel funnel report set up so that we can clearly track how users are making their way down our funnel into become, becoming paying customers. I use Mixpanel religiously. I have a TV set up in my office where I literally just have an entire Mixpanel dashboard set up and I'm just monitoring these KPIs. For example, here is my dashboard where I'm monitoring what percentage of people create an account and end up purchasing my product. So looks like I have a 22% overall create account to purchase rate, which is very strong. I wouldn't know if I need to improve my paywall, if I need to improve my onboarding flow, unless I had been looking at this funnel pretty much all the time. We need to be making data-driven decisions and every path of our application needs to be a funnel. So Mixpanel is how you set up those reports. I did mention that Firebase has built-in Crashlytics and normally that's enough to monitor any sort of crashes or bugs that come up in your app. However, on the back end, if you're building a Node.js uh, back end or a Python back end, you may need something like Sentry. Sentry can get expensive. I don't recommend everybody use Sentry. This is more an intermediate slash advanced level error monitoring solution, but it can work for um, people who have their own custom back ends. Now let's move into the marketing technologies that you're going to need. Re-engagement is a strategy that can easily increase your revenue and your conversion rate of your application, but not many builders talk about it because they don't generate $44,000 a month. And to achieve that level of scale, you need to have these basic marketing mechanisms. This one's called OneSignal, and it allows you to wire up automated push notifications and emails based on different parts of the user's journey. For example, in my Closer Coach app, I have segments for when people convert from a trial, when they start a trial, when they cancel a trial. And you'll see here that people enroll into these segments and then based on their segment enrollment, I then push them into a journey. So for example, if somebody converts from a trial, they trigger this journey. If they started a trial, they trigger this sequence of push notifications and emails. This allows you to have free impressions to your users and you don't have to pay more for ads. If you've already acquired the user once, you can keep hammering them with emails and push notifications and keep your brand top of mind because eventually they will convert. It's very likely they just want to see some more interaction from you. And once they see that interaction, they'll trust you more and they'll convert. So one signal is how you would do this in an automated way. I even use one signal to send one off campaigns as well. Whenever I launch a new feature, whenever there's a you know bug fix that affected users for two or three days, I'll send an email that says, hey, everybody, that bug had been fixed. You're good to try it now. 
please reply here if you have any questions. And this allows your application to have a human face on the back of it that people will know, like, and trust. Remember that humans buy from humans. Software isn't magic and you don't want your software to feel like magic or a black box. Otherwise people won't trust it and you won't have the highest conversion rates, okay? That's why I like OneSignal. You can think of it kind of like a CRM, but it's not really a CRM. If you want a full on CRM, say you're selling a high ticket product or a B2B SaaS, I highly recommend using Go High Level. You can integrate it the same way you would integrate N8N. You can expose webhooks and then send data into it from uh, your uh, software platform. And so I use Go High Level um, for SMS sometimes for you know handling bigger business deals that come in through demos. I'll have a different CRM set up for that. Awesome. So now you know my entire tech stack for how I build and scale profitable products. Awesome. So now you know my entire tech stack for how I built a $46,396 MRR mobile app portfolio. And if you're serious about building a mobile app or web-based SaaS, I want to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. You can use the link in the description to apply to join my Dreams into Apps Accelerator, where I'll literally teach you one-on-one -on -one how to use all of these tools and go from idea to revenue generating software business. I've helped over 1,100 entrepreneurs, and I guarantee that I help you get your first paying customer, or I'll literally keep working with you until you do. We rated 4.9 stars on Google. We've been around since late 2022. It's been over two and a half years, and our builders are crushing it. We've had builders raise VC. We've had builders you know, generate passive income, quit their full-time jobs, uh, start their own app studios. Everybody is crushing it, and you could be part of it too. Click the link in the description if you care to learn more about it. If you don't, all good. Make sure you like and subscribe for more free content on apps, startups, and entrepreneurship. I'll see you in another video.